GoPro, start recording. I've got to be out of my ever-loving mind to be out here fishing in freaking January for croaker. <laughs> but winter fishing's crazy because sometimes it's warm, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's sunny, but it's freezing. But <laughs> I'm going to throw this guy back and then we'll go fishing. The best advice I can offer about fishing in the winter is use the, the freshest bait you can get your hands on. And since Clem's was closed for the season, what's up with that? We decided to go to Pelicans. Now, I had never been in Pelicans, but they had these shrimp and they were ginormous. And they had some oysters. And so the wife was like, let's pick up some seafood for dinner since you won't catch any fish. That's how my wife talks. Since you won't catch any fish in wintertime, I'm like, I'll catch some fish. Let me get some, let me get some of that shrimp. And let me pick up some Old Bay. <laughs> Look at this. It's ginormous. How much Old Bay do you need? I need that. But, uh, I love the pretty fish in, the, in under the ice, nice and fresh. And I don't know, these are like clams and stuffed already, ready to go. So we got some, but I was, I was just interested in the shrimp. I was like, let me get some of that shrimp. I'm ready to go. So Kim checked out, and I headed down to 20th Street West, thinking, ah, eh, the weather doesn't look too bad, but you can never be too sure. Now, at first, it wasn't too cold. I had on some shorts. I grabbed some of that fresh bait I had just purchased, put it on my double drop rings, cast it out. Look at the waves, man. You could tell a storm was coming because the waves were starting to kick up. And that's the thing about fishing in the winter. You just don't know the weather. It's like a box of chocolates. You just don't know what the weather's going to be. I mean, seriously, I've had my air conditioner on this week and the heat on, how to fire in the fireplace the same week I'm making the air condition go on that's how crazy the weather is in north carolina in the winter which i'm sure if you live here you know that already but uh, so the waves were coming up and i was like i'll go fishing and i started catching puffer and i got this puffer but i'm a little disappointed in the side this is puffer it's not even like a four inch puffer i'm not going to keep that he's cute and everything but he's going to go back in the water he needs to go grow up and make some more baby puffers so i can catch something a little bit bigger uh, and i had no trouble catching the puffer they were sort of one after another and that's the thing about the fresh bait if you're throwing fresh bait, you're just going to have better odds of catching some fish in the winter because fishing in the winter is slow. Here's another puffer, really small. Uh, I'll measure him. Look, two inches. Okay, he's going back as well. As I was saying, fishing in the winter is slow. It looks like I'm catching them one after another. It probably was more like there was a few minutes between each and plenty of times when I'm just standing there not catching any. While I was standing there catching my ridiculously small puffers, can they get any smaller than that? I see this flock of seagulls come by. <laughs> I don't mean the band from the 80s. I mean like a flock of seagulls. And of course, one just happens to land all right on my line. And then the next thing I know, I've got the seagull on my line. And the birds are going crazy because the bird I had on the line is getting squawk, squawk, squawk. And the birds above, it was like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. I thought for sure I'm going to get killed by the flock of seagulls. And like, who wants to get killed by a bad 80s band? And then I was like, I can't get them off. I tried to untangle them. Like his wings tied up in it. I'm just going to cut it. So I just grabbed the knife um, caught the other side of it because my rig was still pretty far out you know so I just cut that side of it untangled in two seconds and he flew away and all his little friends flew away too so unscathed for him uh, not so much for my line <laughs> because uh, yeah yeah he was a, a, a citation size seagull <laughs> not so much for my line because look I had to wrap up all this line here that's what I pulled out of the ocean just to save this stupid double drop rig <laughs> So I'm going to dispose of that properly, thinking about tying it back on because I want to keep fishing. But I notice if I look down the West End, there's this storm blowing in. And the next thing I know, it starts raining and I'm sitting there starting to freeze. Like all of a sudden the temperature has dropped. It's raining. And I'm just like, this isn't any fun anymore. I'm catching these little puffer anyway. Let's pack this thing up and just go home. So I take some of that bait. And I throw it in the fridge and I take some of it and I just throw it in the freezer, right? Because I don't need all of it. And I'm like, I don't think there's a big deal putting some bait in the fridge. It's a downstairs refrigerator. It's not my upstairs. That was not my, my kitchen. That was like an extra refrigerator we had when we moved in. There was a refrigerator. So I keep my bait in it. What's the big deal? Anyway, next day I decided to go out. That low pressure system moved off. Nice sunny day. 
on 23rd Street West, and it's calm, like <laughs> nice flat weight, no waves, like nice calm. And I got some of the fresh bait, which I put up in the refrigerator part. So I cut that up, and I give a piece to the bird because they look hungry, and I feel like maybe that's good luck. So I pick up my rod, give it a good heave out there, cast it out there beyond the breakers, see what I'm going to catch. And it wasn't too long before I had a bite. And I reeled it up and I got a little black drum. So I'm like, okay, maybe there's a, maybe his big brother's out there. But I'm going to put this one back in the water. And, uh, you know, I fished for a little while and it wasn't too long until I got another hit. So I'm like, well, this is kind of cool. This one feels like a little more feisty. Black drum can be feisty even for little ones. But this one seemed a little bit feisty. So I wasn't really sure what it was. And when I got it in, I was actually kind of really surprised because... I'm, I'm catching puffer, expecting whiting, I'm expecting croaker. Black drum is nice, but this turned out to be a little bluefish. I'm like, what? Are you lost, <laughs> little bluefish? Shouldn't you be swimming south for the winter or north for? I don't know where they swim. They probably they don't really hang around. I don't catch them in winter very often. But he was a tiny little guy, and so I put him back out there. Hopefully he'll grow up and be a big chopper someday. And that'll make someone happy. And then I thought I'd get creative, you know, and I put my camera on my bucket and I put my bucket in the surf and the wave knocked it over and my phone went into the water. So now my hat went in the water, my phone, went, there's my phone picking it up. It's all wet. I'm like, oh man, that's ruined. But it's an iPhone. So it actually turns out they're kind of waterproof. But I was at this point, I'm like, oh man, all my gear, everything's all over the sand. I'm just like, I'm going to get it. wrong with this beer it tastes just like fish that's because he keeps his damn bait in the freezer i tell him all the time not to keep his bait in the freezer it's disgusting everything smells like fish it grosses me out <laughs> yeah, I'll get you. i don't see what the big deal is it's a couple of dead fish they're in a plastic bag i don't think that can make beer taste like fish there's just no way that's gonna make the beer taste like fish anyway we went went down to Publix. I guess we had to buy some more beer. And out behind Publix is a ginormous alligator. Have you not seen this thing? It's got to be 10 feet long. There's a photo of him nice and up close because I couldn't get up close with the video camera. But he's just sitting out there. I'm hanging out. So if you get a chance, Josh was taking those pictures for me. So Captain Josh was in town and I'm like... Let's go down to the Ocean Crest Pier. I got some gift certificates to go down there. And I was like, we'll throw, we'll throw some bait out there and just see what we can find. I tried to get some live bait and I could not find any. I wanted to get some live shrimp. And I've said this, if you ever saw the video, I'll put a link above that. It's the video of why 10 reasons to fish the pier. I say in that video, you really have to have live shrimp to fish it. Cause they're just gonna catch the same thing you catch in the surf. So I should have known better. Now look at the weather right here, notice this. It's pretty clear. You can see the people on the beach. You can see out on the beach, but if you look far enough out there, you can see it's pretty kind of cloudy out there, right? These guys are out there surfing. They're having fun. So we got some we got some bait and we started catching some fish. And I got this croaker. Look, ginormous croaker. It's got to be at least three inches. Look, three inch croaker. <laughs> and Captain Josh was like me and he was like not having much luck either. See here, he's reeling in about the same thing. These like little three inch croaker we're catching. See, we should add live bait. But he has a look of disgust on his face because we had just come back from a trip about a month ago where I had gone down to visit him. Now, Josh lives in Fort Lauderdale, Florida right now. And here is some, is some scenes from when I went down to visit him on his pier in Fort Lauderdale. First of all, the water's clear. You can see right to the bottom. You can see the fish swimming around down there. And you catch fish after fish, even on shrimp. Here we got a little Jack Cravel, I think it's a Jack Cravel. He got... The cool thing about Florida is there's so many different types of fish. Up here, it's like, yeah, I got a puffer, I got a whiting, I got a croaker, and that's about it, right? Occasional weird bluefish. But down there, it's like every time you pull up a fish, it's a different fish. It's a different type of fish. Like, I don't even know the fish half the time. I'm like, Josh, what is this? Now, if this is a type of pinfish. I think it's called a banded or spotted pinfish. I'm not sure. I do know it's a type of pinfish. <laughs> even pinfish down there. Uh, Jack Cravel, like here's another one Josh has got. They're everywhere. But check out this fish I got on the line. I was like pulling this fish up and I was like, what do I have on this line? Look how beautiful that water is, by the way. I'm like, what is this? It feels heavy. And then I saw it and I was like, it kind of looks like a puffer. And then I'm pulling it up and it turns out it's a cowfish. Is that not the craziest thing? That's what I'm talking about. Every time I pull up a fish in Fort Lauderdale, I'm like, Josh, what is this? What is this? And sometimes he has to look him up and he's pretty familiar with it. So anyway, we had a good time down there in Fort Lauderdale around the pier. But let me bring you back to Oak Island in winter and on the pier. And what I want you to pay attention to is what's happening, not just our little fish here, because we're catching these sorry little croaker, but look behind, look at the scene behind us. This fog had rolled in 
while we were standing there. And I think that's adding to the Joshua's look of disgust because he started getting cold. Like the weather just changed. Look how foggy it is. You can't see anything. It was like pea soup out there. This was like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is going to have to come and help out. So we gave up. <laughs> we gave up. And um, Sylvie said she'd take us out for dinner. I said, that's good because I made your beer taste bad. So the least you can do is take us out for dinner. So she said, where, you know, where do you want to go? And we're like, yeah, go to Island Way. Island Way sounds like fun. So if you've never been to Island Way, they've got some great outdoor seating, but better for the summertime. Although they do have heaters out there. It's great in the summer. And you're looking over the ocean. It's right on the ocean. It's right by the pier. And inside, it's really got a great ambiance. It's it's kind of dark inside. It's got the dark kind of woods to it. Um, just that romantic kind of thing. There's a shot of the bar. And you know, one thing I learned about my new camera is it doesn't really film well in low light. So everything seems a little blurry in here. So I apologize for that. Anyway, very romantic candlelight dinner. Look at the tablecloths. So it was very romantic to sit down with my wife and Sylvie. So what am I going to order? They have obviously uh, salads. They have some pasta dishes, chicken. They have a nice steak thing. I usually get the specials, but someone had posted on the YouTube and said, now that the fish house is closed, where can we get some good oysters? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try the oysters and see if they're any good here at Island Way. So we got some drinks and we're just hanging out, having a good time, very romantic dinner. Myself, Kimberly, and Sylvie. <laughs> <laughs> but our waiter did a great job. He was very attentive. So he came over and took our order, even though Sylvie didn't want to be filmed. And then I got to see Trevor. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best day of my life because Trevor was there. So if you don't know Trevor, go to Island Way, say hi to Trevor, and he's going to hook you up. My wife got the macro macaroni and cheese. Yeah, mac and cheese. And Sylvie got a steak. And I got the oysters. And I will say, I was not disappointed. These were actually really good. And I got them in another restaurant later on in the week. Uh, a week later, actually, and I had my wife taste them both. And I said, which one do you like better? And she was like, Island Way was better. So that might be the way to go. If you're looking for those oysters, check out Island Way and get some there. So Joshua and I got a final chance to get down there and do some fishing before he had to go back. And uh, and we did really all right this time. He got, look at this double header here, decent black drum, not keepable, but decent to give you a fight, especially when you got a puffer on the other end and almost a nice size puffer. So they look like they're a little bigger than the other day when I was out there fishing. And then right away, I got another bite and I doubled up as well, which was pretty cool because I got two puffers on my line. I didn't keep any of these because these were a little bit small, bigger than the other day, but still a little bit small. I was like, my puffer's a little bigger. I guess I'm more of a March puffer fisherman than I am a winter one. So I'm going to let them go. But I was looking for a whiting. Josh doubled up again. He got two puffers. So this is crazy. Like every time we were throwing the line, this day was just a good day. We get the fresh shrimp on and um, we're just, you know, hitting them left and right. He got another one here. And then I saw my rod bend and, and I was like, let me get over there, get that rod, because that looks like something might be eating it up there. And I was right. As soon as I picked it up, I felt the hit. And I'm like, ah, finally, finally, after a week of catching little croaker, little puffer, I finally got a decent fish on this line. And I pulled it up, and it was a whiting, a nice chunky little whiting there. I love when I get a little fat winter whiting. That's what you want to get, folks. Going to go out and fish. Go outside and get a couple of the whiting. This is a great fish to eat. I've smoked them before. You can fry them. I make fish tacos with them. Great little fish. And if you can get them over a foot like this guy is, and they'll be little fatties, that's a good little fish right there. Oh, what's wrong with this beer? It tastes just like fish. Ian, did you put the beer in my fridge downstairs again? Did you put, I mean, your bait? Did you put your bait in my fridge? Ian? No. Did you put your bait in my fridge? No. This is beer from Duffers. It's not my beer. So in the end, my plan came together because my wife went out and bought me my own little personal bait freezer where I can just keep my bait and not have anyone complain. So from now on, the beer won't taste like fish any longer. <laughs>